Hi there, um, so I'm just going to do a really quite a quick video on generators and how they work. And this is Prezi, this is an interactive kind of map through this mini topic. Uh, and you're very welcome to have a go and go to yourself. And what you can do is watch some of the videos as you go around and hopefully they'll help you explain. But I'm not going to play like a video within a video on this one, but you know, I will post the link and um, then you can go around and you can see some other people's videos. This one especially really good. Well, all the videos I've picked in here are pretty good. So generator is really a bit like a motor backwards. So I've got a picture up, up here. Uh, instead of being um, supplied with electrical energy and interact that electrical current interacting with a magnetic field and making motion, you're using motion, uh, a magnetic field and a wire to create a current. So it's kind of the opposite way around electrical energy is coming out. So basically you can make a current in any wire if you move a magnet relative to it. So you can either move the wire or the magnet. Here's a kind of simple um, picture that shows that. There's a magnet, a bar magnet this time, which is being moved into a coil of wire. And we call that coil of wire a solenoid. And the current is going one way. And when it's dragged back out again, then the current is going in the opposite direction. So well, what we can say is that we can change the direction of that current by changing the direction of motion of the magnetic field. So, well, that's not the only way you can change it because you could also actually change the magnetic field itself. You could turn this um, bar magnet around and well, you'd find that the current went the other way initially and then back the, the other way uh, when it was taken out. Okay, you can change the size of the current induced as well. And you can change the size uh, by having more turns on your solenoid, so many, many more loops of wire. You can also increase the magnetic field and you're gonna get a, a larger voltage as well. And also if you actually uh, move the, the magnets or the wire more rapidly, faster, then you're going to get a higher voltage as well. Hopefully you do get what I've told you. If not, then maybe you need to watch some more explanations about it. If you do, then well, can you explain the difference between an AC generator and a DC? Alternating current and direct current. Pretty tricky one, I think. Um, might want to look up some um, diagrams to do that. And if you do get it, then have a little look at this video because it's a fascinating, um, fascinating application of this stuff. So... Here is an AC generator, and you need to be able to label one or maybe draw part of it in an explanation or something, or explain how an AC generator works. It's just like the motor, we've got a fixed, this is our normal way of doing it anyway, we've got a fixed magnetic field, and we've got a coil that can rotate within this magnetic field. And we rotate that, because normally generators attach to the turbine, that's basically how most of our electrical energy is produced apart from through solar cells. Uh, this is an AC because as the coil rotates, every time the coil rotates, then the current inside it changes direction. Okay. Excuse me. Every time the coil uh, rotates, the current inside it changes direction. And they've got a constant contact uh, with these slip rings which are the terminals of a circuit in this case to drive a lamp the brushes are the exposed ends of this coil of wire this coil which is rotating in the magnetic field and because they've got a constant contact well it as the sides of the coil change from positive to negative so the contact changes from positive to negative so you get alternating current here okay now a DC um, generator actually does not have slip rings and brushes it has a commutator a commutator which is um, kind of like open half rings so every single time it turns it's not only changing direction inside in that side of the coil but it's also connecting to the other side the other terminal of the um, circuit so you, you end up with um, constantly positive one side constantly negative the other side you get dc direct current okay i hope that makes sense so that's the job of the slip rings and the brushes again well what happens if we have more turns well more turns you're going to get a higher voltage out 
more turns, there's more wires, more electrons to be dragged, so higher voltage in, in total. What happens if we increase the speed of the rotation? Well, we get a higher voltage, but also something else happens. We also get a higher frequency. So if you think about one of our AC graphs, did that work? It's not deciding to work. There we go. One of our AC graphs like this. Well, actually, if it goes faster, then you not only do you get higher voltage, but also you get a higher frequency of alternating current. Okay, so higher peaks, but also more per second higher frequency. I don't know why that's not working very well. Um, okay, so I think it's not a very difficult topic, but it, you know, if you're not finding it all that difficult, then maybe go down this orange arrow and have a little look at this fascinating video about one of our largest coal-fired power stations, Drax. Uh, if it's kind of in the middle, then maybe you need to practice with some exam questions, but if you found that really easy, well, find out something interesting. Buy, go and find interesting stuff, technical specifications, how do these things work in the real world? Okay, I really hope that um, that helps you with this uh, this topic.